Hello everyone, my name is Luba and in today's video we're gonna talk about pros and cons of seeking an asylum in the US. I know a lot of people who believe that this is the easiest way to get a green card in the US. I personally do not agree with this statement and in today's video I'm gonna explain why. I'm glad you're watching this video and I hope it will help you to understand what are advantages and disadvantages of getting a green card for seeking an asylum in the US. In the end of this video, I'll share the biggest disadvantage which a lot of people and even some lawyers are not aware of. I also would like to mention that I'm not a lawyer and I do not provide legal advice. All the information I share in this video is for informational purposes only. Let's start on the positive side. Number one, filing procedure. If you compare asylum application with other ways of legalization in the US, it looks like a pretty simple procedure. You should just file Form I-589 uh, and send it to the USCIS. And you will be considered to, to be legal in the US uh, since USCIS will accept your application till the decision for your case will be made. Applications are accepted for everyone. It means that even if you don't have a valid reason, but you're not aware of it, you can still file for asylum application. The second advantage, as I mentioned above already, you will have a legal life in the US. So since the moment USCIS gets your application and until the decision will be made, you're not considered having a status in the US, but uh, your application is under review and you can live here legally and get whatever you want. The third reason is getting a work authorization. And sometimes this is the only reason why people apply for asylum because they just need to get their work authorization and they believe this is a good chance for them. Uh, you can apply, as you know, you, if you have a pending asylum application and as soon as it is pending for 150 days, you're allowed to apply for work authorization and uh, you will get it not earlier than 180 days from your application for asylum was submitted with USCIS. And you will also be eligible to get social security number and your driver license. The next reason is the cost. So when you're applying for asylum in the US, you don't have to do any investment. And if you decide to proceed without a lawyer, it means you don't have to pay for your application and you don't have to pay for your first work authorization. Later, you will have to pay for renewal of your work authorization. If you will decide to hire an immigration lawyer, the cost usually starts from 5,000 per case. The next good thing is chance of approval. So according to the statistic, around 25-30% are getting an approval on their interview and around 80% are approved after first court hearing. The next advantage is that you can apply for a temporary protected status. So if you're from the country which is eligible to apply for temporary protected status in the US, you can have a pending asylum application and temporary protected status at the same time. And I guess the biggest and the most important one, once your asylum application is approved, you should wait for one year and then you can apply for a green card and even for citizenship in the future. Now let's discuss disadvantages of getting a green card through asylum process in the US. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you would like to learn more about immigration in the US. The first disadvantage, if you would like to apply for asylum, you have to be physically in the US. It means you should somehow get in the US before you can apply for asylum. And a lot of people are coming uh, on a tourist visa, on a student visa, they do cross the border between Mexico and the USA. The second disadvantage is the timeline for the whole process. So in most of the cases now it takes from seven to eight years to get to the interview. And then depends on the decision uh, which officer would do during the interview, you will uh, continue with the court or you will get finally your approval for asylum application. 
The next disadvantage is connected to the procedure of filing for asylum case because there are not too many cases that you can find on the internet where people shared what was the case, what kind of documents they provided. There are not too many lawyers who share this information. The problem also is it's difficult to understand uh, what amount of evidence is enough and when it is too much because sometimes if officers get too many facts and too many papers from you they're getting so confused they don't even invite you to the interview and they do send you to the court directly and it means that it takes more years for you and it's more stress and more uncertainty the next downside is inability to leave the country actually no you can leave the country anytime you want but if you have a pending asylum application uh, there is a high chance that you will not be able to come back here and the next one which is connected to the travel as well is your inability to get back to your home country the country of your persecution and it's not even about pending asylum application even when you get your green card on hands already you will still have difficulties with going back to your home country all the above leads to the next one your inability to see relatives uh, when you apply for asylum on the asylum application uh, you do put the names of your parents when you apply for social security number you also should uh, release this information what are your parents name and where do they live so if you can't leave the country and see your relatives it means that they should come to the US and see you in order to do that they should get a US visa and here we are talking about chances and chances to get a refusal are much higher than getting an approval for let's say for a tourist visa for your parents to the US the next one I think is related to everyone who is applying not just for asylum application for but for different types of uh, green cards as well it's uncertainty you should just wait wait you don't you have no ideas when you're going to be scheduled for an interview when you're going to be scheduled for court hearing what's going to happen next uh, if your case will be denied or your case will be approved and emotionally it's really really difficult and specifically with the uh, asylum cases you have no control for your case and as of today you can't even add your asylum case to your USCIS online account you can see if you were invited for biometrics if you were scheduled for an interview uh, because USCIS will only send you regular mail and you're stressful because usually it takes like asylum application takes six seven eight nine ten years and you definitely move from one place to another during these years and every time you move it's so stressful because you're afraid to lose your papers the mail that USCIS can send you immigration is not easy emotionally for anyone but specifically for asylum application this uncertainty makes the situation even more stressful and now as I promised in the beginning of this video I'm gonna talk about disadvantage that a lot of people and I'm surprised that even some lawyers they're not aware of it so immigration law uh, is kind of the same and a little bit different in different states so when you come to the US and you think I don't have an employer who can support me I don't have relatives and you decide that you have a case for asylum and you do file it but what happens five six years later during this time you can uh, win a diversity green card lottery you can find an employer who would be willing to sponsor for you that's what is happening in some states you will be able to adjust your status in the US even if you have your pending asylum application but in some states you won't be able to do it so just imagine you're here in the US you want a green card you are so excited and you're applying for adjustment of status but you have a pending asylum application and you won't be able to get this green card for diversity visa lottery if you have a pending asylum application 
The same happens with employment-based green cards. In some states, if you have a pending asylum application, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this uh, application does not give you an immigration status here in the US. You do live here legally, but it's not a status. And it means you can't adjust your status. Even someone is, is willing to sponsor you, an employer is willing to sponsor you, but you have a pending asylum application and it closed these opportunities for you. I think it's really important when you think about asylum application, you'll better talk to a lawyer and ask them about regulation in this specific state where you're planning to apply for asylum. And I will not even uh, tell you in which state it is possible to do and where it's not possible, because it's not only depends on the state, it also depends uh, when did you arrive, what was your status, uh, did you cure any illegal presence in the US, do you have another status at the same time, maybe you're still on a student visa or you applied for a temporary protected status in the beginning as well. There are several factors, but it's really, really important to understand it. It's better to uh, take a consultation and discuss it with the lawyer uh, from your state and discuss your situation in particular, why I would like to mention this mistake and why it's so important. So sometimes people do come here in the US on a tourist visa and they do quickly find an employer. Or for example, they already found an employer before they came here. But uh, this employment-based green card usually takes a couple of years as well. And uh, you should be in a legal status until you file your application for adjustment of status. And it usually takes around a year before you will be able to file for your green card. And what people do? They're like, oh, my tourist visa is going to expire soon. I'm going to apply for asylum application. It doesn't cost anything. It's going to be pending for several years. I will have enough time to switch my status then to employment-based green card. And let's say I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's it. You have a pending asylum application. You won't be able to get a green card through employment here. And they do close this opportunity for them. And now they're in a situation when they don't have a strong asylum case or they don't have it at all and they can't change their status to anything else. So please be aware of this mistake. Please share this video with other immigrants who are thinking about applying for asylum application and uh, probably they have other options. And I also recommend you to watch my video about uh, most popular ways of getting a green card in the US because asylum is a really popular option, but it's not the only one and it's not the best one. I'm really glad that you explore different options and that you do your research and collect information. And I wish your journey to be as less stressful as it is possible. And I'll see you in my next videos. Bye-bye.